Hi, this is Deb Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Um, I'm having a little bit of a sort through um, and I've got some buttons and some fabric. So I thought I'm going to challenge myself to make some fabric clusters with just using the materials on my desk. I have some cotton already threaded up and I've also got a sample of the layering of the sim so, sort of thing I would like to do. So I have a sort of fairly heavy-ish base followed by a netting or open weave and then some sort of decoration and today on this one I've chosen a flower from my chain daisy chain ribbon thing and a small little button basically the technique is very very straightforward it's a matter of layering things up until it's pleasing to the eye so i'm going to sew this one i've got my cottons as i said already threaded and you just literally sew from the back through the button or whatever embellishment you're going to put on it you can use buttons you can use sequins you can use beads you can use appliques like a embroidered stuff all sorts of stuff really you only need to go through the button holes a couple of times and just sew at the end with a couple of swirls through the loops you can put a drip glue on the back if you're worried that it's going to come undone. I'm not too worried because that's going to be glued onto something at some point so and there you have it folks. So I've got this sample fabric of like a velveteen so I'm going to that as my base so I'm going to cut a, a small square and I don't like to do huge chunky ones you can do them whatever size you like but because they're going to go in my shop I like to do them roughly an inch so we want to choose some fabrics or some lace or whatever to complement the colors we've got so i've got this nice stripy ribbon so that would be quite sweet to go on there somewhere so i'm just picking out the ribbons and not actually all the fabric not actually doing the design yet now because we've got this stripe we've got this rip wrap color so you can pop that in there you don't use in a particular design just put back in the box next time so it won't go wasted now we need a little bit of open weave i've got this creamy one now this used to hold socks in the washing machine or something now i've cut that a little bit big so i need to cut it in half all i'm doing is working out of this scrap box i'll just turn it to see what's in there there's a bit of pink netting maybe we'll do a pink one next there's a bit more green some stripes so we've got a few bits selected here so we've got our base and then we want our open plan one sometimes it's nice to do like a crisscross pattern or it's nice to sort of go alongside it so you've got that bit and then that bit and then maybe that bit going across the top and maybe tuck that bit under so that's a basis now this bit is a bit frayed, so you can either make it a feature, which I'm going to do, so I'll make it even more frayed on the other side, or you can just trim it off. So I have my bits, now I need to find a button that's going to suit. So I thought one of these little wash might be quite sweet over the top. So it's pretty much like a sequin in style because it's just got the one hole in it and I can show you how I would sew that on so I'm gonna hold it in place make sure I've got it where I want it and you need to make sure that each piece is secured on so you could come up from the back before you do your, your button or your some fastening and then make all your pieces are secure or you add your fixing so Put them on, give them all a bit of a tug, make sure they're not going to come off, and then put your fixing on. So you want to come up through the middle and down to one side, and tucking it slightly under, trying not to get your cord too tanked. So you've got a stripe here, and then you want to come back up through the middle, and again coming on the side, and that will hold it in place. Now, if you want to be real fancy, you can go up and back down and do the four. 
you either wrap the cotton around the needle or put your needle through the cotton. You usually do it twice, makes it nice and tight. Cut it too short because I know it's going to be glued onto something so it doesn't need to be too short or it might unravel. So that's number two. Completely different but done on the same basic principle if you like. So you can choose your fabric, you can choose your button first. So let's go the other way. I'm going to choose this fluffy butterfly button. I want to get some fabric to work around. Now it's got blues and it's got a little bit of orange. Ah, oh, I've got a bit of denim here. Now that butterfly is going to drown it out. So I might have to use this piece, cut this piece down a little bit. Just pop this up to the top here for a minute and have a rummage with me. So what have we got in here? Ooh, a bit more pink lace. These are more base ones, so they're a bit heavier, so I'll get put them to one side. This, I believe, is the lining of an old curtain. Try the grey. Doesn't work, it doesn't work. Ah, oh, and there's a little bit of blue here. So let's try a bit of that. I'm just cutting smallish squares. They need to be slightly smaller than your base, because otherwise your base won't show underneath. So I've got that there and that there. A little bit of pink lace for a bit of contrast. I'm not sure I need the grey. Now, I like the lace, but this bit is a bit chunky. So I'm going to cut that right up at the edge here. So this sort of tones in with the creams on the blue. And you can just sit, relax and sew buttons on fabric. It's quite fun. It would be if I could get the thing through the loop. So that's number three done. So we've got one, two and three. So what we're going to use this time, some of this gingham. I can't remember what this came off of. Some of them have got a little history to them and some of them haven't. Right, so this netting is from a bath sponge. Not sponge, puff. Yeah. Right, so we have a we have our net effect. Now I've got a bit of ribbon here. I might be able to get that into a bow or something possibly. And I've got a bit of silver ribbon. Now this I think is wired, but the wire comes off quite easily. So I can have a bit of pink, a bit of sparkly, a bit of buff puff. Do we want the sparkly over the buff puff? What do we reckon? Yeah, be over the buff. And then I'm going to try and do some sort of bow here. I think I've got some sort of bow here. It's not going to work. It doesn't quite. So what I can do is I can twist it round itself and tie it in a knot instead. And that will give me something to stitch on. I'm not using a button this time. I'm just using the ribbon as a focal point. So I've got some sort of focal point. It doesn't matter what it is. And it could be really a clashy colour as well. I mean, I could put a small button on it as well. But I thought, no, just sew your knot on. So, you make fabric clusters, but what do you do? Well, because I decorate cards, they're quite handy for using on card fronts. You can use them in journals. You can use them on clothing, on a lapel. You can make brooches from them or as a point of interest on a bit of clothing and uh, good fun to make so I just got a bar of them and I dip into them every so often for card making but I sell for people, other people to use to card make the ones I sell I sell on my Etsy shop which is Debbie's Crafty Hands Etsy so I've got a little nice sagey green light, lighter green now, I mentioned earlier that you can use buttons and various other bits and pieces all this butterfly nice with that yeah we'll have that butterfly some buttons are not as suitable as others depending on the cluster you're going to be making but something size would literally drown out my average inch size button but you might like a really chunky button 
a little heavy and clunky but they're good on other things and again with the more rounded buttons they're brilliant for some crafts but i wouldn't suggest they're good for these more delicate things this one i'm on the fence about it's a fair size but it's a very pretty and it's quite light compared to this wooden one you know you could possibly get away with that because it, it doesn't drown out too much and you could have things fluffing out the edge of it another thing you can use is like feathers like my boa by the way i found that when i was sorting things out as well so that was a bit of fun so this one it will be betwixt and between same with the, like the butterflies they're big but if you've got things coming out of them from the sides or whatever you, you can get away with it now this one definitely not because it's got much too big a shank and the shank is the bit that you sew on courses for courses i suppose depends on what you like how chunky you want your clusters i mean you might want your clusters four inches square um go for it so i say go for it right so having given you that tutorial on buttons used for clusters I'm going to have a little search in here to find some suitable fabric for my green one here. Go with my butterfly. So maybe a little bit of this. That would be quite pretty. I haven't got any lace on this one yet. So that's another consideration. So we can maybe have that little bit of neck curtain and, and that will be it. You don't need a huge amount. Oh, we're cutting up a little bit. I want to try and catch it. I'm looking through the button holes make sure that my netting is going to be caught as well so i'm trying to position it for there as well as to show it on display so to speak so now this fabric's a bit weird it's got a bit of a rubberized back so i'm just going through the cotton not through the back of the fabric not catching the back of the fabric necessarily because i don't want to tear the rubberized bit on the back okay so in a short space of time, we've done five so far, and that's with me wittering on. Not bad. If you have a button that is not the colour you want now, or you have a clear button, just paint the button to the colour you do want. No polish or acrylic paints, especially if you're making an outfit. So, say you want an embellishment to put on a dress or make a brooch with, polish your nails, have your button to match whatever polish, and then the cheap brown hair clip and then use nail polish on that and you've got a fit matching your nail polish simple as oh, i haven't used this yet i guess we're going backwards now we're going to use and get the lace out first and this is just a crochet ribbon i'm not sure where i got it from I've got a bit more of that green background so th this one is because it had the label on it the label's all a bit fuzzy it's a bit flatter so it's weird Oh, it doesn't really matter. So maybe we bring some grey to go with the green. Let's have a look what it looks like. So we've got that grey. There's a nice grey polka dot here. And we have some grey already cut, didn't we, somewhere? It's pretty grey frayed edges. Let's take those frayed off. But I'm just trying to sort of get my layout right. Now I'm going to audition some buttons, see which looks best. Now this is like a, a blue grey or like that one actually because it's got the grey but it's also got a green undertone yeah go for that one the other one i had to choose from was this one but i think that's a bit too brass and i have a, a dark grey thread here to use up so use that um items of clothing from charity shops old sheets that sort of thing make fantastic fodder if you like for clusters and, or other things as well but they last you absolutely ages so maybe buy a pillowcase and share it with a friend you know. oh that one didn't spin so what i can do open it up tuck it right in come back up through the back where i know it is and do a couple of small stitches just to the side just to ensure that it's held in place and that's nice and tight so that's why i say just give it a gentle tug to make sure that it's all in place because the last thing you want to do is put it on wherever you're designing it for and it falls to fall off of it i'm running out of thread i've got the yellow one here and i've got the red thread here so once i've used up my thread that'll be the 
end of my challenge, shall we say. So there's that one. Now I'm feeling very limited because some of these buttons I can't use because of the shank or whatever. And some of them are a bit big, but I'm keeping to my thing. Let's have another look in my box and see what we can come up with for a base. It doesn't matter if they're the same base, like this green, I can use green again, because they're not necessarily going to be on the same thing. Maybe we could use a flower. I haven't used this um, lace yet. Ladies, yes, it is knicker elastic. But it's also a very pretty knicker elastic. So I went for it. So that can go along the bottom. Let's see what else we've got here. Now what tone? Greeny tones. So I've got this little scrapette here. The green tones. And that can go along the top now. Didn't put much ribbon in here, did I? Got a bit of pink. That be too pink. That might be a bit too pink, too garish. I don't really want sparkly. Ooh, I have limited myself, haven't I? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I found the bit. I found the bit I want. A nice little beigey brown. So it's quite a neutral one, this. But instead of having our lace over the top, we've got it under, at the bottom. So I'm going to sew that on first, using up this little red um, because the other bits are going to be a bit higher up so I'm just going to literally tack across from here to give a little bit of colour I'm not worried about stitching let's use that bit of thread up again I'm not going through the plastic in the back of this because it's I don't even know where this come from I think I said that in the previous video it's um weird fabric but I haven't got much of it left unfortunately because it's weird in this way it's good to work with right so that used up and that one's used up I have four needles and I've only got one lot of thread left so we're getting down yep. so this one and this one we want a little bit of green showing I'm going to put that there so the green shows around the edge I'm going to cut in half again. So it's literally a tiny little square, and I'm going to put that at a nice angle. I'm wondering whether to just lift that up, show the the red thread, and then put a little tiny red button in the middle. What do we think of that, folks? Yeah, I think that looks quite nice. I'm going to get rid of those fluffy bits off of there, and then we're going to slip it. With the four hole buttons, you can either do a crisscross pattern on it or two side by side parallel lines depends on what takes your fancy or what suits the project i'm doing parallel lines here and i think i've done parallel lines on the other one as well but yeah crisscross work as well so we've got a little bit of sort of the yellow tinge that blends green a bit and then you've got the red from the cotton before you've got the beigey colors if you like the challenge think of some different challenges for myself and if you put in the comments if you like the fact that less materials to use but working out ways of doing it so no cereal box of yogurt pot and a bit pot of glitter or something you know I, things like that I can sort of inspire people to and use my imagination with yeah be quite fun so audience participation is very welcome comments are always welcome if anyone's going to criticize, please make it constructive. That's what I ask, and be polite. So we got a little bit more thread left. Um, I've got a couple of these sort of paler colours squares, which we could team up with something. Maybe some pink. This is another bit of the skirt, not the lacy bit, but another bit of the skirt with some broad rayon blaze on it. Way back in the day, my sister bought me this beautiful skirt and top outfit, and I wore it and wore it and wore it until the elastication in the skirt went, and I'm not quite sure what happened to the top, but it just basically wore out. So with this one, I'm gonna go layers. So I've got square and it's in within a square, and then I'm gonna have a smaller skirt within that square, and I'm gonna use this other bit of lace I've got here. Now you can do them offset with each other like diamonds, like that, and like that. And it needs a, I think, quite a broad button just to liven it up. That one 
bit too big possibly, but we'll keep it to one side. I like that one because it, it goes nicely with the broad round lace pink and it, it makes it quite delicate. Remember I'm going to be sewing this in yellow cotton just to add to the fun. Yeah, I think that, that one's nice but it's a slightly too big a button. If that was... Hang on a minute, we might have a, another candidate sticking in here. Too small. I'm sorry but your little pipsqueak, you're too small. We're going to have this one. You're the winner winner chicken dinner this time. Don't worry little pink buttons, you'll get your chance on another project. It's been quite fun challenging myself because normally I'd have all my materials around me and I grab from here and I grab from there and I think what I could have done is put a few beads on as well because that, that would have been nice to use the beads but again I was trying to restrict myself to just what pick out the top of the jar for the buttons and um, the few scraps I found not necessarily laying around but during my sorting out gathered up another one so this is what we've made so far so we've made one two three so in there and move you up out the way bring the next lot out five six all together i missed out four but number fours are there seven eight clusters now i've uh, found a brooch back basically it's a pin with holes in it so that you can sew onto whatever you want to make into a brooch. So I'm going to choose one of these to turn into a brooch. This is the winner winner chicken dinner and by feel it's the one with lace at the bottom. Hey not bad so that one gets to be a brooch. So you open the pin up you turn your project face down doesn't matter which way the pin goes whether it goes this way or that way unless you have an up and down for your brooch now most people pin away from themselves as such so if i was pinning this onto myself this is the way round i would have it comes out and back down and my bottom is there bottom of the thing that actually could be the top of the thing as well it doesn't matter but for me it, that's the bottom so i'm going to put it that way open this up it comes this side and then sew that to there now you could use glue i prefer to sew them because i think it's more secure right so you want to get it as straight as you can i'm going to come up from under check in that i've not come through the side if i have well i have a little bit but basically the fabric of this one is a little bit difficult to work with because it's the rubberized bit so we will embrace it, shall we say. Come up through the hole, and then I'm going to put my cotton through my loop. So again, to try and secure it, if I can get my needle through the hole, it'll be helpful. Try not to get your cotton caught around the pin, and then come from the... I'm turning this round, so I'm coming from the bottom again, but the bottom is now the top, if that makes sense. And back under, just basically sewing the pin on. If you could sew a button on, you could sew a pin on. Let's just say that. Because it's not going to matter so much, hopefully, what it looks like on the back. But if it does matter, you know, want to present it nicely or whatever, for if you're doing it for a bell or whatever, then all you need to do is put another bit of fabric over the top and glue it on. In fact, that's another way of putting the pin on. If you use fabric glue and glue it over the top of them, that works as well and it keeps it nice and neat and tidy. Depends on your preference, shall we say. So I've done a few loops. I make sure it's nice and secure. It's a bit wobbly, so I need to pull it a bit tighter. And then we have a pretty little brooch. Right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clusters and a pretty brooch. I think that's not a bad day's work. So, Hope you had fun watching and it was interesting for you. Please like and sub subscribe if I can get my teeth fixed in um, and comment. And I'll see you in the next one. Much love. Bye bye.